Hello and welcome. I'm painting a cute little cottage today, the sort that's nestled into a cosy garden, just like I imagine exists in The Land of Midsummer Murders, one of my absolute favourite shows that I have re-watched an embarrassing amount of times. I'm starting with the things that I know are definitely going to be in the background, which is the sky and that little strip of road that you can see in the front of the house. And that's about as much planning as I'm really doing. Um, lots of the work is done by the time you've drawn out the image. When you're drawing something like a little house like this, a little cottage, part of the um, challenge is to figure out what to leave out because there are always so many little details on the building and sometimes you can get a little bit lost especially in these older buildings I find where there's all sorts of little angles and twists and extra bits sticking out so I often will make sure that I have left out most of that and only put in what I feel like painting and what I think will uh, be worth it in the end. And the other thing that you have to do to turn that little cottage from being a few lines on a paper into something that looks like uh, a four-sided building is to figure out which walls are going to be darker and which walls are going to be lighter because that's about the most important thing I think when it comes to drawing these little buildings. And I've got a lovely range of brick colours in my paint box so I rather enjoy painting with those and I'm going to use a variety of them to put in the various walls on this little cottage. And at the moment I'm leaving out the windows, um, they'll be one of the last bits I do but I've got to paint all the brickwork around them. And also the bits of bricks that I think are going to peep out from you know how you can see through the uh, flowers that are planted in this little garden. And one of the other things I really enjoy painting is a picket fence but I actually came across uh, an image that had a picket fence that wasn't white it was this kind of green colour so it uh, makes things a bit easier if you don't have to paint too many white things. I'm going to leave the frames of the windows white uh, and those are the ones you can see I've just put in in lavender because although they're white what you have to put in is the shadows that are created by the sort of recesses the grooves in the woodwork on those um, window frames so they're not going to be completely white they are going to be white with little bits of blue to indicate the shadows and one of the other things that I love about these old cottages is the moss growing on the roof and this turned out to be about my favourite part of this painting. Um, when I finished, you kind of, you put in the, um, the moss and then you kind of get distracted by doing all the other things. And that's actually the best way to go about watercolour painting. It always turns out better when you've done the least amount of interfering. So at the moment, you can just see the moss is sitting in those kind of big puddles of grey, green and sap, oh, uh, not grey, green, green yellow, gold green is what I meant, uh, and sap green that I put in there on the corners of, on the sort of edges of the roof. But when I was finished those dried uh, in a lovely way that looked very much like moss. I was quite pleased with those. And once the uh, little cottage is in you kind of get a chance to firm up the walls by painting the the shrubbery around them so I'm putting in a, a whole lot of hedges uh, and lawns and some kind of rough shrubbery and any chance I can I pop in a bit of colour because I do love a little bit of that. I really enjoy suggesting the kind of brick texture I'm certainly not going to try and paint every single brick but I love the sort of variety that you can get in there with uh, little marks and the flat brush is very handy for that sort of thing and then there's a fair bit of it that is covered on the edges by the trees and the flowers which are some of my other absolute favorite things to paint and one of the things that I want to do which kind of 
focuses the view into the middle of this painting is to kind of give it a almost a vignette effect by putting some extra trees kind of outside of our line of sight but you can still see the little leaves coming in in the corners uh, and that's part of the reason that I did the sky first because we would definitely be able to see the sky through those little holes so it's quite handy that I can um, just paint the leaves in these corners over that already dry sky and the sky holes are kind of already painted through there and because green has got a bit of blue in it um, it really doesn't matter that we can see the blue underneath the green that we put down because watercolour is transparent, one of my absolute mm -hmm. favourite qualities of watercolour. I actually can't wait to paint this again because I haven't painted for a while and I always find that if that's the case, if, it's, if there's been a bit of a break between painting, I tend to struggle with being as loose as I would like to and I feel like sometimes with these um, with this painting I was tightening up and putting in too many little details so uh, I'm quite excited to paint this again funnily enough and I almost forgot to put in the darks of the windows uh, but I think it's quite important um, sometimes it feels a bit sad to me to put in these big dark squares well they, I suppose they're not that big are they they're little dark squares but it really does finish it off to, uh, and suggest that it's actually glass and that there might be something going on inside. It took me a while to make myself sit down and actually paint this one but I'm so glad I did and I can't wait to paint it again. See you next time. Thanks for watching.